Alexa, we've got to dive right into this amazing book that Do you it. and Carlos have. It is, it's super exciting. The title is What If Love is the Point? Living for Jesus in a Self-Consumed World. I love that subtitle. What made you guys go with that? Um, well, I just feel like everything is self-help, self this, self that, where for us, we were like, man, the more selfless we are, the happier we are and the happier the world is. And I think we just need to flip it around. We need to like, yes, yeah, self-care is important, but we need to show people what it really looks like to live for the kingdom and walk with Jesus and how satisfying that is. Yeah, no, I, and I love that. And it's such a rarity because obviously culture is so consumed with the self. And I love what you right. said there. You know, it's important to be healthy and to make sure that we're all healthy, but that, you know, as Christians, we're called to something bigger to, to right. love God and love others, right? right. So, all right, let's 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 dig right in. We'll get back to the book. I want to actually talk about your story because you okay. have such an interesting background. <laughs> you know, you're in Hollywood, super successful career. And I know for both of you, you sort of hit these struggles. You hit these points of wondering what it's all really about. Take us yeah. through that a little bit. I mean, okay, I will I will say this. God has always called my heart. Ever since I was little, I just always felt his presence and I've always felt his peace without understanding. And And it's so funny because I think that they explain that often in the Bible, like how like God will appear and he'll do things for you and it's beyond your understanding. And that really was my story for such a long time. Like I had this wild connection with God that like my family didn't even understand. And, you know, when I was younger, uh, we had a somewhat of a Christian household. My mom taught us about Jesus and like instilled that love of Jesus in our hearts, but we didn't read the Bible. We didn't have anybody to help us understand what things meant. Like even Holy Spirit, I wouldn't talk about Holy Spirit for years because I just always thought it was the weird part of the Bible, right? Because <laughs> I just didn't understand it. And then um, as I got older, God just kept calling me into his arms like again and again and again. And specifically after I went through a divorce, I was like, I need to seek refuge in God and really knows know what it means to be a Christian because I keep telling everybody, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. But I haven't really read the Bible. I haven't had anybody break it down for me. I don't know what it is. I've read verses here and there, but I don't even know what I believe, actually. And it was when I started diving in with God that like my whole world was transformed. Like I already knew that I had access to this great like superhero in a way, but I just didn't understand the true fruit in what that meant. Yeah. And so, and so you, you go in, you start to discover that. And I love what you said there, because I think people can really relate to that. You know, when you're meant to have that relationship with God and God knows you're going to come to that place, I think he gives us those breadcrumbs and that connection sure. to him, you know, throughout our lives. Sure. How, how did Hollywood, and maybe it didn't, but I'm curious, how did Hollywood complicate that? You know, because here you are, oh, I mean, yeah. on a normal day, people are struggling, but you're in this really interesting, tough industry while you're trying to figure that out. You know, I would actually say the biggest thing was community. Community was my issue. Um, so the only community I had was Hollywood. And Hollywood, for the most part, is not <laughs> Christian. Um, they're not. They, I mean, you'll find faith-filled people, but they were kind of like me. They were like, "Yeah, I, I know. G I like. I love Jesus. I love God." But like, they don't really understand what that means, right? It was just kind of this like Sunday morning Christian, if that, or maybe it was like an Easter morning Christian. <laughs> um, and so when that was when that's your community. Um, you're not really talking about God. You might have a couple conversations here and there, but um, you're mostly just talking about industry stuff or other life stuff. And it's interesting when I started surrounding myself and diving in with God, but surrounding myself with like a kingdom hearted community, um, a whole world was opened up to me because before I would be timid about bringing up God in a conversation. Jesus was off limits. I was like terrified to bring up the J word because, you know, people might think you're one of those Christians, right? Like this is where my mindset was back in the day. But then the more and more I started hanging out with people who believed the same thing that I did and who really wanted to further the relationship with God, I just... You can't help, like when God is at work in your life, you can't help but talk about God. It gave me this comfort to be able to talk about God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, anywhere and all the time. Whereas before I would have just been 
like mortified to bring it up in a conversation because I would have been judged. But but God has like really done a number on my heart where he's just like, what are you afraid of? Like, why are you afraid to mention my name? I've given you everything. Um, so so he he really worked on my heart over those years. But I think a lot of it was less to do with like Hollywood per se, but just the community. I was just in the wrong community. That's a great, that's actually a great word because a lot of people are in the wrong community, no matter where they work. Right. I right. Mean, yeah. It's like so many of us, or we're lacking, you know, we may have one or two Christian friends, but we're not around people enough right. you know, to, to actually really be... influence you in a positive exactly. way. Yeah, exactly. I, and you know, I think about your career, how, you know, if you look back to before you really understood who Jesus was and you look at where you are now, how has your approach changed when it comes to your career? Oh, uh, flip-flopped. Like I just completely did a 180. Um, if you look at the roles that I was taking clearly, like before you could tell like, Oh, I see the roles that she took right before she like jumped into having a relationship with God. And you know, it is an interesting balance because I don't believe in just doing Christian movies. I don't believe in doing just like cookie cutter movies. I love storytelling. And the truth is even some of the most wonderful Christians, the seasons that we go through in our lives, they look ugly sometimes. Like a lot of times they look ugly. Like there's yeah. no such thing as like this perfect cookie cutter life. Like very often like when life hits you, it hits you hard and it bring it can bring out just some sides of us that are embarrassing that we don't want people to see or that we don't people want we don't want people to know about because we don't want them to think differently of us. But that's what I love about storytelling. That's what I love about taking somebody to the movies. It's like you're transported into this world where you get to ride that roller coaster of emotions with somebody. And then at the end, if it's a really good movie, you'll have the redemption. You'll have the like lesson learned. You usually leave with your heart just like, oh, what did I experience? So so for me, when I look at the industry, like, yes, my roles changed dramatically. Um, but I also believe that like, I don't have to just be doing Christian movies in order to honor God. Like I want to be able to honor God doing worldly content that actually touches the world and maybe shows a glimpse of God without having to say Jesus. And oftentimes I think that's where, you know, we're most impactful is like consistency in your walk with God is probably the best testimony you could give a non-Christian because if they just have you preaching down their throat all the time, most of the time they're just going to be like, Oh my gosh, please shut up. Like, I don't want to hear about Jesus anymore. (laughs) But if they see you walking consistently with God or just like having peace in insane circumstances where they're like, how are you calm right now? Like how on earth are you okay with everything that's happening in your life? That's your opportunity to say, Oh, Jesus. You know, so I I always feel like whether like, yes, I do believe the roles I take need to be important when, um, when it comes to representing God, not that like, I can't play a drug addict who finds redemption, (laughs) you know, they're redemptive, Um, they're redemptive, something to them that, that has a meaning, right. But also, but also just being cautious of like, you know, nowadays, a lot of movies and, and TV, they just want to push the boundaries, push the boundaries for no reason, just to go there. And to me, that doesn't make any sense. So I just won't take projects like that. Yeah, no, it's gotten it's gotten so crazy, even in it's the last nuts. five years. I mean, it's it's completely out of control. I think I believe that, we're about to yeah. see a turnaround, though. I really do. I think there's a lot of pushback from um, faith filled families. Like, look at like we have large families. <laughs> it's not like we usually have like one or two kids. Usually, Christian people or just like faith filled people in general, um, they usually come from very large families, so they usually determine like what gets seen in the box office or what gets seen on television. And I really do feel like you're seeing not a backlash, but like a, Hey, look, we're not happy with the stuff that's out there right now. Um, We want to see a little more wholesome family friendly stuff. No, a hundred percent. And when you look at the numbers of what actually performs, it's mostly family friendly content, which is really interesting, right? I mean, especially in movies. (laughs) I know. It's crazy. But you mentioned kids and you guys have three kids. We do. And I'm going to ask you, and you have three young kids. So I'm going to ask a loaded question because okay, I'm sure you've learned it. a lot. Yes. Um, but what have been what have been the big lessons that you and Carlos have learned about life through parenthood? Um, well, we actually talk about it in the book. There was one moment where I really felt like 
it was like our aha moment. We had just had ocean or not just had ocean, but it was like probably like five months or six months at the time. And we have him laying down. We're like playing with him. And then he keeps like sitting up and like wanting to get with his other toys. And we're like, no, we just want you to look at us. So like, finally, I'm like, you know what, babe, I'm going to move all these toys out of the way. So I'm like, move all of the toys out of the way just so that he could focus on us. And then he starts playing with me and giggling and smiling. And my heart is just like overjoyed because this kid is looking up at me smiling and giggling and not distracted by anything. And that was the moment where we were, where we were just like, oh my gosh, that's got to be what it's like with God, where God is just like, I don't want to have to move all these distractions in your life. Like, I want you to just look up at me and smile. And I'm like, and if my heart feels this good when I see my son look up at me and smile, What does it look like to God when we're like reaching out to God or smiling with God or just bringing him into our lives? Like that love, I could not even fathom. Like I can't understand that. So that was our moment of like becoming parents just gave us such a better understanding of like his love for us, I guess. And it has just been awesome. That's powerful. (laughs) And I I love the the thing about the two of you that's really interesting um, and we'll get into the book a little more here because you know you work together a lot. You do a lot together, and that is I, I love that. You know you don't often see that um, in Hollywood or really anywhere in life where uh-huh. where a husband and wife are working together. You guys were on Dancing with the Stars together. And now <laughs> you've written a book, you know, a book together, um, and lots of other projects along the way. Um, but with this book, what are the two of you hoping to accomplish? When somebody picks it up, they read it. What's the big takeaway for the audience? For us, it it really came back to relationship Um, and not just marriage. Like, honestly, when we first started writing the book, we we had marriage in the forefront just because we were like, man, everybody gives marriage such a bad rap nowadays. Like you watch movies and it's always about like bad marriages or how like marriage is holding people back or just like how they need to explore other options because their marriage isn't great. Like just weird stuff where we were like, no, we want to shine a light on marriage. And what God ended up doing was he started choosing all the testimonies in our life. And he was like, yes, marriage, I do want you to focus on, but this is a relationship book. It's a relationship between you and Carlos, between your friends, between your family, between strangers, like how you approach strangers. And, and it it comes down to like, when my relationship with God is good, the effect that it has on the rest of the world is massive. Um, Because when I am like in the word and I'm talking to God it just, he shines through in everything that I do where like I, like you go to the grocery store, this can be for anybody. Like you go to the grocery store, how you speak to people or help, like you want to be more helpful. You want to, you want to serve his people. Right. And his people is everybody. It's not just like other Christians or people that you, that let like you that so that you're going to serve them. No, you're, you're called to serve everybody. And, and for me, I feel like that's what I want people to take away in this book is like, just the relationship with God, the relationship with your spouse, with your family, with your friends, and how to really make that holy. Yeah. And that, you know, that old saying, you put God in the center, everything else will come together. And it's like the cliche, but it's, it's true. I mean, you, you change the way you behave based on whether or not, you know, and it's an everyday thing you wake up, you know, you're trying to put God at the center. And I love that you guys are, are tackling that here. And you two met at a Bible study, correct? Yeah, yeah, actually in this house. So we're staying at our friend Andrew's house. That's not my family. That's Andrew's family, but but I do love them very much. Uh, it's a photo in the background. Um, but yeah, so we met at this house. Andrew had had a Bible study going for years that he had always invited both of us to. We didn't know each other, um, but it just so happened to be like God's timing is everything. And I'm sure God would have worked something out too if I had come sooner, but it was just the season I was in. I needed to get out of it. I didn't want to be there anymore. Um, I'd just recently gone through a divorce. Um, I was unfulfilled when it came to relationships, unfulfilled when it came to my family life, my work life, everything it was just really frustrating. And God had been calling on my heart for so long that I'm like, you know what? It's time to dive in. And that first Bible study, I showed up and that's where I met Carlos. <laughs> That's crazy and, and amazing. And, and here we are talking, you know, you've been married I seven know. years, three kids, and you've had this, you know, incredible story. And, you know, the book, just that, so, you know, if you're watching this, listening to this right now, it's what if love is the point living for Jesus in a self-consumed world. It comes out June 28th, 
Alexa, thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And if I could just say one last thing. Absolutely. We want to complicate God because we feel like we have to do all this stuff. It's really so simple. Like he just wants us. And I think that's what we're trying to get across in the book is that we don't have to complicate God as much as we try to. Like it really is as simple as you said, putting God in the center and everything else really does work itself out. Yeah. And we need it now more than ever. You know, culture oh is gosh. so crazy. I mean, the world is so, so badly. crazy. <laughs> and I love that we're you guys are doing need. this and speaking out. And I love too that, you know, having, I love that you guys were approaching marriage in the beginning as sort of the centerpiece. And then everything kind of came around that. You know, there's so much right now that people need to hear. And the truth really is so pinnacle. So I appreciate you guys writing this, putting it thank out there you. and you taking the time today. Thank you. Well, thank you for having us. Well, me, I guess Carlos has been working, but thank you for having me. 